Good evening, I'm Prarambh Hal. Let's begin with the main stories. The government remains indifferent while wildfires fires spread across the country. Blaze reported in 350 places of 47 districts today, government entities shy away from their responsibilities. <laughs> Budget session of the parliament called for 10th of May. Political parties yet to hold discussions on removing obstructions at the parliament. House Speaker also fails to perform his role. Shares of 30 companies are waiting to be issued as Securities Board of Nepal has remained without a chairperson for the past four months. Selection process delayed, political intervention doubted. And West Indies A secured an unassailable 4-1 lead in the five-match 2020 series. See of the hosts by 28 runs in the fourth match last match on Saturday. Massive loss of properties to fire have been reported from Sarlahi, Rotahat, Palpa and Bagloom. 72 houses sustained damages by fire in Sarlai's Bishnurira municipalities Bara, Udhoran this afternoon. The fire has been brought under control and the police are taking stock of the losses. In Madhupur of Rautat's Madhav Narayan municipality, four houses caught fire and losses have been estimated at more than 1 million rupees. 37 houses and cow sheds have been damaged in Palpas Rampur municipality 4 and 5 and Purva Khula rural municipality 6 as the fire in Heklang forest moved to the settlements. Likewise, three houses caught fire after the forest fire in Gotnada of Kavre's Mahabharat rural municipality spread to the settlement. Two houses and animal sheds have been damaged and 14 cattle killed by the blaze in Dada Khet of Baglung's Amalachor. Based on the government data, wildfires have been reported in 3,985 places across the country in the past one month. According to the government, wildfires have been reported in 72 dis districts of the country. The highest number of wildfires has been reported in Surkhet district at 292. Blazes have also been reported in 267 places of Dang, 248 of Salyan, 212 in Koilali and 214 in Bordia. Most wildfire incidents have been reported in areas with national parks. It has been learned that damages have been caused by wildfires in 161 places of Bake and 157 of Dadaldura. Wildfires have also ravaged forests in Doti, Gulmi, Konzanpur and Nawalpur among other places. 144 places in Parsa, 161 in Chitawan and 81 of Kapilbostu have also witnessed losses because of wildfire while hilly districts including Khotang, Makwanpur, Palpa, Putan and Sangza are at high risks. The wildfire in the outskirts of the Kathmandu Valley can be clearly seen from the administrative centre of the federal government, Singh Darwara, as well. However, despite the thick smog covering the city, the government has remained indifferent. Prime Minister and other ministers hold discussions on political issues every single day, but they have yet to talk about ways of extinguishing the wildfire. Despite the Prime Minister's claims of him being serious, forests continue being destroyed across the country, while human settlements are also suffering losses. Public are also losing their lives in efforts to extinguish the wildfire. All community forests of Bhaktapur are witnessing wildfires. The government forests have also reported instances of blaze. District Division Forest Office has said that efforts are being made to extinguish the wildfire. Wildfire at the National Geological Garden in the district was extinguished after five days. Fire at Manthali of Gundu, surrounding areas of Pativara Temple and Pilot Baba Ashram was also extinguished after a long struggle. Despite road access to these locations, efforts of the government mechanism were inadequate to extinguish the fire. While fires have continued in Kabre Chap, Kumari, Char Ghare and Mahalakshmi municipalities, Toplo Community Forest in Godavari. Two persons were killed while extinguishing wildfire near Anandavan Hospital in Lele of Lalitpur on Tuesday. Around 20 security personnel and local residents were injured. Further risks of wildfires remain in these areas. In Kathmandu, forest of Takshinkali is also bearing the brunt of wildfire. Local residents, security personnel and disaster management teams of the province and local levels are making efforts to extinguish the wildfire. However, their efforts have yet to control the blaze. All three districts of the Kathmandu Valley are at risks of wildfire. Wildfire has been reported in around 75 hectares of forest area in the past two months alone. Residents of the outskirts of the valley are struggling with wildfire, while the thick human settlement is now under the covering of smog. Even in such a situation, the federal government has remained silent, which the experts have termed unfortunate. The Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Authority under the Ministry of Home Affairs has said that extinguishing wildfire does not fall under its jurisdiction and has been pointing towards the province and local governments. 
While fires are in progress at 350 parts of 47 districts of the country at the moment. With the federal government remaining indifferent, other government bodies have been shying away from their responsibilities. While the government entities have yet to take actions, security departments with limited resources and public with local resources have been risking their lives to extinguish the wildfire. The federal government has yet to respond to the countless number of fires across the country. At an event in the capital today, participants had urged the center to address the nationwide problem, but Prime Minister Pushkamal Dahal, who was in attendance, failed to mention the efforts underway to address the plight of the victims. पचिल्लो समय देश के आपी रूप में भाई लिए को आग लगी ले घुलमी जिल्ला में अपनी धुलों छेदी पुई को प्रतिमा गई रूप दुखा व्यक्त करना चाहेंगे और सबे पीड़ित और का पक्ष में सरकार को तरफ आता आवश्यक आवश्यक सहायक को प्रतिबद्धता तथा व्यक्त करते हैं Air pollution has increased massively because of wildfires at several parts of the country. According to the Department of Environment, rainfall is required for reduction of the pollution. However, there are no signs of rainfall even in the next two days. According to the Department of Environment, the Air Quality Index AQI of Nepal has been measuring very high in the past few days. AQI has been figuring between 151 to 200 in different parts of the country, while it measured up to 410 in Vaisa Party of Lalitpur today, which is dangerous for health and can cause severe impacts. AQI under 100 is considered average. The department has said that air pollution has increased drastically in recent time because of wildfires and rainfall is necessary to curb the pollution. However, the department has said there are no signs of rain until Saturday. It has added that there are possibilities of some rainfall in some parts of the country from the next week and higher chances are in the hilly districts of Koshi, Kondaki, Karnali and Sudurpaschim. With poor air quality, the Ministry of Health and Population has urged the public not to venture outside of their home unless very important and use masks as well. It has also urged patients with long-term illnesses to remain extra careful. It is now time for our segment Public Pulse where you text us with your opinion. Public polls. Before we ask today's question, let us take a look at the result from yesterday's poll. Yesterday we asked, what do you term the patients being denied treatment at government hospitals in the pretext of poor management of medical equipment? 39% were for A, government irresponsibility, 54% were for B, commission game, and 7% were for C, joke of the fundamental rights. And here is our today's question. Massive losses are being caused by wildfire across the country. Why has the government not been able to take effective steps to control the wildfires? Your options are A. Heights of irresponsibility, B. Lack of coordination, and C. No preventive measures. The voting is on. Type NEWS, select your option A, B, or C, and send it to 34001 to share your opinion with us. A budget session of the federal parliament has been called. Upon the recommendation of the Council of Ministers, President Ramchandra Portal has called the session of both houses of the Federal Parliament for 2 p.m. of 10th May. Today's meeting of the Council of Ministers had decided to recommend the President to call the budget session. The meeting also decided to form a team of Nepali representatives for dialogue during the Nepal visit of the Minister for Foreign Affairs of Japan slated for 5th May. And despite the government calling the budget session of the parliament, discussions have not been held to ease obstructions at the House of Representatives. Main opposition Nepali Congress has remained firm in its demand for investigating Minister for Home Affairs, Ravi Lamichani, who has been alleged of involvement in the fraud related to cooperatives. The government faces a challenge to ensure regular operation of the parliament by gaining confidence of Congress, which has remained firm in its demand for formation of a parliamentary probe committee. In addition to reduce, in, introducing the policies and programs and the budget, the upcoming session also shoulders the responsibility of moving forward with the bills. However, concrete efforts have not been made even by the Speaker of the House of Representatives, Devraj Khimire, to ensure regular operation of the Parliament. Other than urging the chief webs of the political parties to remove the obstructions, Speaker Khimire has not been able to apply pressure on the senior leaders of the parties. Chief Justice of India Dhananjaya Yashwant Chandrachud is set to arrive in Nepal tomorrow. Indian Chief Justice Chandrachud is to arrive in Nepal upon the invitation extended by Chief Justice Bishwambar Prasad Srasta to attend a national conference. 
Senior Justice Ananda Mohan Vatrai is to welcome Chandrachud at 4 p.m. tomorrow at the 31 International Airport. The conference is slated for Saturday in Kathmandu. Parliamentarians have said that topics related to transitional justice have not been concluded because of the political parties prioritizing their interests. At today's meeting of the Committee on Federalism Enablement and National Concerns under the National Assembly, parliamentarians said that the bills related to transitional justice, including the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, had yet to be concluded as the parties had politicized the issue. They added that even the international forces were interested in the TRC. Despite the entities involved in the conflict now being in power, they have not been able to conclude the issue. Therefore, the parliamentarians have urged the parties to reach a common ground for implementation of agreement reached during the peace process. The committee has also held discussions with the Truth and Reconciliation Commission and the Commission of Investigation on Enforced Disappeared Persons today regarding the progress made so far. Secretaries of both commissions suggested for appointment of officials who had a clear understanding of the issues including the conflict period and the peace process. According to the Commission of Investigation on Enforced Disappeared Persons, the Commission had recommended relief and compensations for 549 families, of which 456 families have not received any relief. Now, at a time when the government has been airing statements on creating jobs through promotion of information technology or the IT sector, investors and startups of the industry have called for revisions and improvements in the existing laws and creation of investment-friendly policies. There are no debates on the IT sector being a big contributor to economic development. Increasing attraction in IT has also led to creation of jobs and employment opportunities. Seeing a future in the sector, the young population has been studying IT and making investments as well. The government also called for investments in the IT sector at the recently held investment summit. The government has put forward the policy of attracting investment in the IT sector to facilitate economic prosperity. A study has shown that the IT sector of Nepal has generated 67 billion rupees in revenue through export of IT services. Software development, programming and coding among other services are being exported from Nepal. The finding from two years back also shows that the IT sector has made a notable contribution in increasing remittance and foreign reserve in the country. While the government is making efforts to draw investors in the IT sector, operators of the IT companies are not happy with the government itself. A separate law has been demanded for purchase and export of IT services. There are several opportunities of investment and employment in the IT sector related to education, health and tourism as well. IT companies of Nepal have shared their grievances regarding complicated procedures for export of softwares and payment systems. They have alleged the government of and bureaucratic systems of failing to understand the dimensions of the IT sector and creating unnecessary hassles. Nepal is yet to benefit from artificial intelligence, AI and cloud computing among other advancements in the IT sector. Creating skilled human resource in the sector and a conducive environment for them to stay in Nepal could help in increasing generation of foreign revenue. In our public voice segment, today we have asked in several provinces what should be done to generate employment opportunities through the use of information technology. Let us now take a look at what they had to say. Uh, व्यापक रूपले के छ भन्दा खेरि रोजगारीहरु सृजना हुन सक्छ सम्पूर्ण देशै एउटा भूगोल भएको हुनाले घर घर कोठा कोठामा बसेर चाहिँ हामी संसारका काम गर्न सक्छौ घर बसी बसी हैन अनलाइन मार्फत कहाँ के भइराखेको छ सूचना प्रविधिकै माध्यमबाट हामीले थाहा पाएर यही मार्फत र हाम्रो रोजगारीको सृजना विकास भइराछ घर बसी बसी आवेदन दिने Online classes to With the position of the chairperson of Securities Board of Nepal, Sebon, remaining vacant for the past four months, several services have remained halted. Public offerings worth around 19 billion rupees of 30 companies have remained stranded. 
The Sebon has remained without a chairperson since 6th of January. Despite the government forming a committee led by National Planning Commission Vice Chairperson Min Bahadur Shrestha for appointment of the chairperson at Sebon, the committee has not been able to hold or conduct interviews with the candidates. Because of this, 16 companies are awaiting the issue of their shares worth 11.47 billion rupees. Of those applying for the position of the chairperson of Sebon, Krishna Baldar Karki, Chiranjivi Chapakai, Navaraz Adhikari, Mukti Shrestha and Santo Shrestha have been selected. Of them, Karki is the chief executive officer of Nepal Stock Exchange, Chapagai is the former chair of Bhima Samiti of the Insurance Committee, while Adhikari and Shrestha are directors of the board. While three candidates are to be selected on the basis of their presentations and interviews, the committee has yet to conduct the tests. We have monies coming up, but right now it is time for yet another short break. Sports News West Indies A have secured an unassailable 3-1 lead in the five-match 2020 series with a 28-run win over Nepal men's national cricket team in the fourth match played today. West Indies A won the toss and decided to bat in the match played at the Thrivan University International Cricket Grounds in Girthipur. Andre Fletcher top scored for the visiting Caribbean side as he remained unbeaten at 84 runs from 54 balls. His innings featured four sixes and he hit the fans nine times. Johnson Charles made a quick fire 58 from 30 balls with six sixes and three fours, while Fabian Allen remained not out at 33 runs. Kushal Burtel picked two wickets for Nepal, while Pratish GC had one scalp. In reply, Nepal did not have an ideal start and kept losing wickets at regular intervals before being bowled out for 181 runs in 20 overs. Skipper Rohit Podal was the only batter with a notable contribution of 82 runs from 47 balls with 5 sixes and 7 fours. Matthew Ford and Hayden Walsh picked three wickets each for West Indies A, while Fabian Allen and Gurekes Moti shared two wickets each. With a win, the visitors have won the series with a match to spare. Last match of the series is slated for Saturday at the same venue. That is all for the moment. Up next is the news in Nepali. Thank you for staying with us. Goodbye for now.